Call me old-fashioned, but I just don't get it. Why would anyone want to be like Paris Hilton or Britney Spears? Yet, for millions of teenage girls around the world, self-obsessed trashy airheads are all the rage. Glorified in those videos, which are really just soft porn with songs. So, it's refreshing to meet someone like Pink. Don't get me wrong, she's no goody two-shoes. A former teenage runaway and drug addict with tats and hair to match her name, Pink is sexy and smart. She sold 20 million albums, and her latest hit is a song called Stupid Girls, aimed squarely at you-know-who. Good, good, good. Pulling your shoulders back. Nice. More attitude. Nice. Good shape, sir. Her name is Pink, and with her modern girl mix of sex and feminism, she's an advertiser's dream. And that la little bit of the sneer, uh-huh. Today, of all things, it's a campaign for an Austrian muffler company. A little bit more tummy. That's it. Nice. But then, Pink is an unlikely saleswoman, most famous for selling an unlikely message to teenage girls. Just be yourself. Nice. I think women and girls have it hard enough without having 50 more things to worry about. Am I five pounds overweight? Do I need a nose job? Are my boobs too small? Um, do I use the right words? Do I sound unchallenging so boys will like me? It's so much fun to go out and be a young girl and be good at something. It's so much fun to find out what you're good at and go do it and get respect for it and, and attention for that instead of just attention for your body as an object. Pink's made plenty of enemies in the music world with her outspoken views. And what really riles her are the vacuous images being force-fed to teenagers by her dolled-up contemporary. So what's your definition of stupid? Stupid is selling yourself short or... Um, I mean, there is something to be said for escapism, but not 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Have you met the girls? Have you met Paris? Absolutely. Or and, and how did the conversation go? Oh, not since. Not since. Um, <laughs> they avoid me. The point is, there's nothing wrong with dressing sexy, being sexy, talking sexy. Just, I don't think it has to come with the price tag of dumb. Do you write for no one but yourself? Mostly, or else I write to piss someone else off. But mostly it is a very selfish, it starts out as a very selfish thing. We see clips where there are guys singing and women writhing around almost naked and they're spoken of as skanky hoes and whores and bitches. I think it's disgusting, but I mean, what can you do, you know? You can't say asshole on the radio, but you can say bitch. It's a shame women haven't come up with a word yet that just <laughs> encompasses males <laughs> that is that degrading um, that wouldn't be censored. There needs to be more emphasis put on other things that girls can do instead so, of just sit there and shut up and look cute. Yeah, or, or writhe around on the floor in a hip-hop clip. That. Does that concern or you? Or make your butt clap, <laughs> which actually is a talent in itself because that's amazing. <laughs> can you do that? No, I can't do it. <laughs> La fame and fortune, the superstar Pink almost never was. Her own adolescence was so rough, it's amazing she survived it. It's so much easier to be hard on yourself. It takes work to be good to yourself. The only daughter of a strict Vietnam veteran, Pink was born a rebel and eventually thrown out of home. I wanted to be on my own at eight years old. I was very anti-authority. Very punk rock mentality as a little girl. Didn't get along with my mom, my parents split up, blah, 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 blah. You know, and I A just, story not unusual. No, it's more common than not. Um, but yeah, I just, I wanted to change the world, especially mine. <laughs> At eight years of age? Younger, yeah. Wow. My dream was to hitchhike across country and sing on the Venice Beach boardwalk for change until I got discovered. It was seven o'clock in the morning and the DJs were packing up their vinyl and the party was ending and my friend dared me to get on the microphone and one of the DJs was asleep and he woke up and said, you have a good voice. I said, I know. <laughs> so I went back the next night and the following four weeks, got into a group, got kicked out, got into another group, got a record deal. So was that when drugs ended, when you sang in that night? Thanksgiving of 95 that night, that was the last time. When that DJ woke up and said, I'll give you a guest spotlight. 
See, it wasn't a thing where I said, okay, I'm, I gotta quit, my, this isn't good, my life is going downhill, I just buried my friend from an overdose, blah, blah, blah. It, it wasn't that thought mm. process, it was just that, okay, I'm on to the next thing. That was, whatever, I'm on. You're gonna be a rock star? Yeah, now I've, I've just found my road, I'm taking it. And the sort of girl that I wouldn't imagine would allow anyone to stand in your way once you... No. Mm. So I was eventually kicked out of the house. <laughs> <laughs> which was absolutely fine with me. <laughs> King's parents never gave up on her. Her mum now even tours with the band and is so immune to her daughter's ways that an impulsive nipple piercing after a show in Germany barely raises a flinch. It was interesting to have my mom sitting in the dressing room watching me get my nipple pierced. I tried to get her to do it, but... My mom's sort of very detached about it all. She doesn't look at it as though Pink is Alicia as her daughter, the whole Pink thing, I don't know. But how are you folks now? I know you've got a good relationship yeah, with them. Very... They must be very proud of you. They're proud and still a bit, um, at first it was just relief, absolute relief. They could breathe easy and sleep at night. What, that you were out of the house or you got a career? Both. Happening? <laughs> that I was out of the house, that I was living healthy, that I was, you know, being responsible and working really hard. And uh, now I think, I don't know what they are. <laughs> Still relieved, probably. Nice, more attitude like that. Good, that's great. Fantastic. Pink does have at least really one good. conservative good, good, good. streak. She's the new wife of motocross champion, nice. Harry Hunt. I always joke and say that I tried to kick him out of my life eight times and he wouldn't go anywhere, so I married him. But the point behind that is he's the most consistent reliable man that I've ever known. The marriage proposal, though, was true to type. She asked him, popping the question to an unsuspecting Kerry on a pit board she was holding up while she was assisting during one of his races. So the sign said... <laughs> the sign said, will you marry me? And he's going. And he's going like this. <laughs> <laughs> kept going. I'm like, that... F <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, all right, screw him. But he actually didn't look at the sign. Mm. He was just concentrating and doing his little thing. Mm. I was like, oh, that's a sign. I'm not going to do it again. And then I, next race, I wrote it again. I said, lap three, look at the sign. And he did. And he almost killed a guy veering off the race and said yes. Actually, he said, are you kidding me? <laughs> no. <laughs> I wouldn't have ruined your race if I was kidding. So it worked. Yeah. It worked. You got your man. I got him. Theirs is a most what modern sort of union. They divide themselves Thank between Pink's much. career in Los Angeles and Kerry's tattoo business in Las Vegas. Hi, perfect boy. Days together like this so well are rare. Come love me. Hi, baby. Mm. I know not to hit the lips. Yeah. How could you not love that? <laughs> <laughs> is it true that once you read the lap board and it said, will you marry me, you came off and Pink said, get back out there? Yeah, she says she don't marry losers, so get my ass back out there. <laughs> That's right. And I went, away I went. Yeah. A Thanks happy a home, no a stellar career, and a life back on track. There's just one thing Pink could add to the rosy picture, but no rush. Raising a daughter just like her is a terrifying thought, most of all, for Pink. What sort of mum will you be when you have a teenage daughter? Open-minded. The one thing I'm going to do differently than my parents is I'm not going to teach my children to be sneaky. Meaning by putting too many rules on them and turning them into liars. Knowing that they're going to do what kids are going to do anyway. I'd rather have an open, honest, um, communicative... Is that the word I'm looking for? Is that a, right, is mm. that a word? Yeah. <laughs> I'm making up words as I go. Right. I'll show you how smart I am. <laughs> um, an open and honest relationship. That's all I want. I don't care what... what kind of hobbies they have or who they want to be. Any boundaries? Yeah, I just don't know what they are yet, you mm -hmm. know? I don't want my kid going out and stealing cars and robbing people and cutting school, but I want them to know about life, too. As a role model, Pink's unconventional but she's proof that smart girls can be themselves and make their mark. And she has this to say to those, especially teenage girls, 
still searching for their own contentment. Say, what do you get at? What do you like to do? What makes you happy? Not you should do this or you should do that. Just what do you get at? What, what makes you tick? Go do it. Follow yourself, not the pack. Absolutely. Everybody's good at something. Find it. Hello, I'm Tara Brown. Thanks for watching 60 Minutes Australia. Subscribe to our channel now for brand new stories and exclusive clips every week. And don't miss out on our Extra Minutes segments and full episodes of 60 Minutes on 9now.com.au and the 9Now app.